Hot day, Nat's leaving. And we get a visit from Z Spars about our furling screw. And Zephyr comes out of the water for the first time in a year. I'm off to Australia. No! Because I am getting my citizenship. So I'm going for the ceremony and then I have to wait for my Australian passport. Very exciting. So I'm going to be like, just like James, three passports. Yeah. Can't wait. <laughs> All right, I'm off. So it looks like I'm getting on the second one. Did you get good seats? Yeah. With her plane ticket in hand, it's time for Nat to say goodbye to everybody. While she's on a flight for 23 hours back to Australia, we're getting straight back to the boat works. After communicating with Z-Spars, they've sent a mechanic out from their office in France to replace our furling screw. the new furling screw and this is the old furling screw. Well guys, exciting day today. We are taking the boat out of the water. Zephyr is being lifted out of the water so that the repairs to the stern can be made. After a year in the water, we're surprised to see how good the anti-fouling looks.
So this is the furling screw from our mast. It's This is the old one that was removed. Um, the guys from Z Spars have put a new one in. Now what I wanted to do is talk to you guys about this furling screw and sort of how it's set up and uh, a closer look at what actually is failing here. And then I'm going to talk a little bit more about the solution that they put in. Um, but we'll go more into that in a minute. So first off, this is the part that connects to the foils that run up the uh, inside of the mast that the sail actually um, uh, coils around when you uh, furl it in or out. So then moving down, we have these two end pieces, which are steel, I think, and they basically hold the furling screw in place. Now this, is pl this furling screw is actually plastic, and this is what your line coils around when you, uh, for furling in or out the uh, main sail. And then turning it over, we can see we have these three aluminum pieces here. Uh, these two outside ones are the ones that actually uh, fix to the mast. And then um, your line actually goes in this gap here and runs to the furling screw. So at either end of the furling screw, you have bearings at the top and bearings at the bottom. Now these bearings are non-sealed bearings, um, which is, to be honest, if they were sealed bearings, I wouldn't even be making this video. Um, but when I actually asked the mechanic that came out and changed this, first thing I said to him was, why aren't they using sealed bearings? And the bottom line is, he says it's cost. Now, he's not an official Z-SPARS uh, representative. He is a mechanic that works for Z-SPARS, so I don't know if that's Z-SPARS position, um, but that's what he has told me is cost. Um, I don't know what the production costs are of uh, sealed bearings versus non-sealed bearings, but I feel like uh, it's something that Z-SPAR should definitely look into. So what's occurring, um, from what I can tell, is that when there is tension from the main halyard, you're getting vertical tension on the screw, and it seems like that the tension that is created from the main halyard is lifting the screw up and it's creating just enough gap here for these bottom bearings to escape which is why the bearings at the top are never popping out because you you always have that vertical tension from the main halyard that it doesn't allow these bearings to come out i don't know if the distance between these two pieces is not exact enough so when this screw is replaced the first time in ibiza um, I tested it all and it didn't seem like there was any play um, and the gap in the bearings looked okay. Um, so I was actually quite satisfied. Um, but obviously, you know, we've only sailed, I think, uh, less than 300 miles on this. And, you know, as you can see, there's lots of play. Whatever the case is, this distance is getting wider somehow and it's allowing that play to occur when you have the vertical tension from the main halyard and it creates just enough space for those bearings to follow. So, yeah, so that's a little bit disappointing. Now they've allowed me to keep this, uh, the, the old screw and I'm glad they did because I actually still have the spare bearings they sent out the very first time, um, but I'd refuse to change those myself. Um, so I can, I'm actually going to rebuild this one so that I have a backup screw for whatever reason, um, you know, we could be halfway across the Atlantic and you know the whole system fail again um, and I'll have this uh, this backup system which is fantastic and I know how this goes in and out now I've seen it done twice so um, it's pretty straightforward um, and definitely something we can do while we're at sea. So let's talk about the solution that Z-SPARS just came up with in the install you just saw. Now I've had a bit of time to think about it and at the time um, I was not uh, I didn't feel right with what they were what they were doing and um, I didn't you know I held back at the time but now that I've had some time to think about it look at it um, test the system a few more times ultimately we've decided we're not satisfied with the solution that these bars come up with so let's talk about what they actually did so um, I wish I had kept the new screw out long enough and to show you. So the solution that Z-SPARS came up with was essentially just to remove this bottom bearing altogether. Um, and the mechanic explained to me that the vertical tension from the main halyard would negate the reason for even having that bottom bearing. Um, so at the time, it didn't feel right, but um, when we tested the system when he installed it, uh, it was very difficult to pull the main in and out by hand. Um, this system normally, a not very strong person should be able to pull the main in and out without any wind, 
no issues or points it into the wind as you should be doing. Natalie does it with no worries whatsoever, um, but when I tested it the, on the day it was done, we had less than five knots of wind, so the sail was hardly even moving, and I had to use every ounce of strength I had to pull the main out and pull it back in. Um, so it definitely didn't sit right when the at the end of it. The more I thought about the solution that was put in, um, I was not satisfied with what Z-Spars had come up with. Um, this is designed to have bearings at both ends for a reason. Even on an infurling main, you will still from time to time adjust the tension on the main halyard. And the second you reduce some of that vertical tension from the main halyard, that's gonna cause the screw to put pressure on that bottom bearing that should be there. Now, just relying on the vertical tension to neglect the need for the bottom bearing, in my opinion, is it's it's not a solution at all. And in fact, um, I foresee it being more problematic in the future. And actually, in that particular area, you then have plastic, which is going to be have the possibility to move against metal. So ultimately, it's not a solution in my mind, um, and it's actually just going to pave the way for more problems in the future. Um, I don't pretend to be an engineer, but essentially removing something that has been designed by people to work in that particular way, uh, I'm sure, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure a lot of people would agree with me that they wouldn't be happy with that either. So I've actually raised my concerns with Z spars. Um, and through FKG, which is the rigging company in uh, St. Martin that installed all the system. Um, so, I, you know, I need to say right now, FKG did an amazing job. They've installed the whole system correctly. Um, these units here are actually built by Z-Spars. It, it gets packaged with the mast and sent. So um, this is certainly not a, a fault by FKG in any way. Um, but FKG is being amazing. They're right on the issue and working with me and... Um, uh, Z spars to uh, try and get this resolved. So um, I'm not sure how we're going to move forward with this system. Um, if I'm being truthful, I'm losing a lot of confidence in this system. Uh, Z spars is being amazing. Their customer service is fantastic, and uh, you know they're right on it. But um, you know, I'm, I'm I'm definitely losing confidence in this system. When it's working, it works perfect. We never get any jams. Um, it furls in and out absolutely perfect. And um, I couldn't be happier with it. You know, uh, we love the system. It's such a shame that something so simple as using a non-sealed bearing is the bane of our existence at the moment. And really the main thing that's letting us down with this system. So stay tuned. It's an ongoing issue. Um, I'm waiting to hear back from FKG and Z-Spars on what we're going to do about this. Um, and we'll keep you guys updated on uh, what happens. So, um... so every day we're absolutely blown away by people's generosity and support um, for what we're doing. And uh, you know, Natalie and I are so humbled. Um, we definitely think we're some of the luckiest people around. Uh, anything from you know just a lovely email to uh, obviously our patrons who make this completely possible. Um, and it's all your guys' help. Um, one of our patrons, uh, Tim, um, decided to treat us to something off of our Amazon wish list. So I have no idea what it is. Uh, Nat and I have been trying to figure out um, what it might be, but we have no idea. And Tim would not give anything away. So we're going to open it up and see what it is. So I'm pretty darn excited. Ah, uh, Tim, you absolute legend. So we've been wanting one of these for ages. So you attach this to your GoPro and it allows you to get some of these amazing half in, half out of the water shots. It's just one of those things we think that'll make for some really cool photography and video. And uh, yeah, we're just looking for new ways to try and get creative with what we're doing. So Tim, thank you so much. I think, I don't know, I had a chat with Nat and we decided whatever it might be, we're just gonna, it's new name is going to be Tim. So, uh, cheers, Tim.
Appreciate it. Much love, mate. So one of the things that I couldn't do when I was in the Caribbean. If you are new to our channel, consider subscribing so you can join the adventure each week aboard Zephyr.